Hi guys, welcome back to Switch Up. Here we've got our review of Banners of Ruin, and thanks to Rob Nor the Viking for writing this one, and then I've edited it and made the video. Developed by Montebero and published by Goblin Studios, Banners of Ruin describes itself as a party-based deck building game set in a world of medieval animals. It was originally released on PC back in July of 2020, but the question really is, should Banners of Ruin be at the top of your deck of Switch games or left at the very bottom along with a Joker and that silly little information card? Well, let's find out. Banners of Ruin sees you take control of a team of warriors from the House of the Blackfoots, whose goal it is to overthrow the ruling and fearsome House Ender. Your mission as a team is to infiltrate the city of Dawn's Point and fight your way to each of the city's elite opponents until you reach the final guard captain. There's not a great amount of exposition and the lore is delivered via text on screen. Upon starting a new game, you're given the choice of completing a tutorial or jumping straight into the action. I definitely suggest the tutorial, especially if you're not familiar with the genre. The tutorial explains the basics of the game. For example, that each character has vitality, which is basically their HP, However, they may also have armor, both of which are represented by the number above your character's head. After you or an opponent completes an attack, it will first take away the armor, then the vitality, eventually killing the character. Some attacks also have secondary effects though, such as causing the character to bleed, which will sap away at their health at the start of each round. However, these only last for a certain amount of turns, depending on the power of the attack. Another game mechanic of note that's explained in the tutorial is the ability mechanic. With each different character, more are unlocked as you play, having an ability that can be used a limited number of times within each round based on the amount of willpower you have. These are the blue points shown over here, while stamina are the points shown on the left, with each card requiring a certain amount of these. An example of these would be the mouse's charge ability, that will then make the following attacks more powerful. Another is the Weasel's ability to spawn three cards that will cause the opponents to bleed. As willpower is initially the most finite resource available to the player in a battle, it's important that you choose wisely when you use your skills. Making your way through the campaign is pretty intuitive. You choose two characters at the beginning of your journey and you will just have access to a bear and a mouse. As you progress and reach the taverns, you can then decide to unlock different ones such as the weasel or fox. In a choose your own adventure style, much of your gameplay will take place from this screen. You'll be making your way down different streets. Each street has a choice, each represented by a different card. Each card offers a different scenario. Now, each of these could be perilous or a chance to improve your team by healing or an opportunity to upgrade their decks. Some lanes will force you into combat and others will give you the opportunity to hire Blackfoots to join your cause. Depending on how you want to play the game, you may want to actively enter combat, which will help your characters level up more quickly, especially when you reach those elite opponents. Or you can try to avoid the combat by hiding or using distractions, which in turn will give you the opportunity to improve your deck, depending on how lucky you are. However, the game isn't that forgiving. Oftentimes, there isn't a way to avoid combat, and as alluded to at the beginning of this review, there's certainly more than a little RNG, that's random number generation, which can make some runs almost dead on arrival. Sometimes the lane will have multiple rounds before that card disappears, and this means you may find yourself entering combat to avoid elite combat because the combat card hasn't yet disappeared. As confusing as that might sound, essentially, sometimes you're gonna have to fight. Now, let's talk about the battles. Your merry band of Blackfoot warriors will be on the left of the screen and the Ender Guards will be on the right. Each faction has two different rows, a front row and a rear. It's possible to change the battle formation prior to the battle to enhance your chances of winning and to mitigate some of the incoming damage if enemies are using entire row-based attacks. If you have a bear with heavy armor and a weasel with light armor, a great tip is to place the weasel behind the bear and allow him to act as a tank and soak up much of the damage. Once battle commences, you'll choose random cards from your deck, such as strike or block, each one will cost your character stamina, which regenerates at the end of your turn. But it is important to remember that those willpower points do not regenerate. So using them wisely is the order of the day. In some aspects, you really are at the mercy of the game's randomization. You always want to be dealt a hand that has powerful attacks to help dispatch your opponents as quickly as possible. However, this isn't always the case, and you may find yourself just trying to stay alive. Another great tip at this point is to make sure you don't blow up your deck with cards that 
you might not necessarily need or want, and some of them are character specific, so you won't even be able to use them. The order of the day is a good variety of useful cards. When you reach the elite opponents or the bosses, they're essentially much trickier fights that will force you to think a lot harder about your strategy. And it's your decisions really with the cards that can mitigate much of the RNG factor, but not all of it. Banners of Ruin incorporates heavy RPG elements in the form of leveling up of your team and characters, something that you will find yourself attempting to accomplish as much as possible as you progress deeper and deeper with each run. And yes, with each run I hear you ask, you heard that correctly, Banners of Ruin is a roguelike game. If you die, you'll be pushed right back to the start. However, all is not lost. Your upgraded characters and some of your hard-earned Florians, the in-game currency, will go with you into the next run. This makes each one a little less daunting. The progressive elements of this game are well designed and although the RPG and roguelike mechanics can be frustrating to start with, once you have an understanding, like me, you'll start to find it enjoyable and quite addictive. Controls are easy enough to pick up, but they're also a little bit strange. Selecting cards is achieved using the right analog stick, with ZR and A both being used in combination to select and use. And they've also added a magnification feature whereby if you hold down X, it'll make it much larger, which is very useful for reading the small text if you're playing in handheld mode. Once I'd got to grips with the nuances, of the different mechanics available. I really enjoyed Banners of Ruin, but it's not a roguelike you feel like you could pick up and finish in one run. You really do have to do some of those unlocks. It may be a little frustrating for your first hour or so, but pay close attention to the combinations of cards you're using and you can overcome some of that randomness. I give gameplay 17 out of 20. It's very addictive and the controls overall score 15 out of 20. As far as visuals and performance go then, the anthropomorphic animal character models are quite pleasing. They're well crafted, however, being as this title is a deck builder, they're kind of put to waste due to animations being relatively basic. The world does have a dark and grimy aesthetic to it, there's just not a huge amount of variety. The same goes for enemy types. I was secretly quite pleased to see that when you pick up different armour and gear it is reflected on your character's model, but that main area where you'll be spending much of your time is a touch uninspired with the text size being on the small side. Now I mentioned they added in a text size option for the cards, but it doesn't appear that they've done the same for much of the writing that you'll have to read in the game, which is a little bit odd so if you're playing this predominantly on a Nintendo Switch Lite, that's something you're going to want to consider. As you'd expect, performance is flawless, I've not experienced any crashes in the game, and load times are reasonable. One thing the developers have done a great job of is with the game's audio score. There's a real sense of danger that's heightened by the in-game music and sound effects. It has a mystique about it. Whether it's within the game's menu, selecting which lane to take, or during combat, the music within is always great. There's no narration here which potentially could have pushed the audio score even higher. It's a game just crying out for Brian Blessed's golden tones. Overall, I give visuals 15 out of 20 and audio scores 17 out of 20. Banners of Ruin is currently listed on the Switch with a discount of 20%. That makes it £12.39 or your regional equivalent. And that would mean that now is the time to pick it up. For the genre, it's a great game. It has enough there to become somewhat addictive, and I think that's the most understated use of the word somewhat ever from Rob. I've been totally hooked to it, and it will definitely make you come back for more, although it's not without its frustrations. At the usual price of £15.49, still a good price to be honest, it's clear a lot of work has gone into Banners of Ruin, and even if this genre isn't one that you're generally interested in, it will still have dozens of hours of playability, and value scores 16 out of 20. Banners of Ruin, in conclusion, is an excellent example of a roguelite deck building RPG that doesn't avoid all of the pitfalls that come along with the genre and be aware that the RNG factor isn't avoided here. It's something you'll have to overcome through progressive runs. It gets a switch up score of 80%. A big thanks to Rob Nor the Viking for writing this one. As always, it has his token humour in there and I thoroughly enjoyed reading it. Nice one. Thanks to all of you who enjoy the channel. Please do subscribe if you're new. Welcome. Hello. And to the rest of you, good to see you. Please leave a comment down below. Thanks to our patrons. You guys support us every month. We do appreciate it. And as always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya.